Hello everyone, this is Andrew again. And now, we're going to discuss PLC Programming Training Part 14. Exercise 1. Create a PLC program given the following conditions. You have one push button and one actuator. If PB1 is pressed, the process will start. The process will stop if the cycle repeats 5 times. And we have the process here. Cylinder will extend if cylinder is at fully retracted position. Then, cylinder will retract if the cylinder is at fully extended position. Okay, let's have our demonstration. Let's press PB1. Okay, that's it. Now, I want you to post this video and try to solve it by yourself. Then after that, you can resume this video so that you can compare your answer to my answer. Okay, let's continue. This will be my answer to this problem. Now let's press PB1. As you can see here, when we press PB1, X0 is energized, that will cause M0 to turn on, and M0 will not turn off even if X0 is off because there's a latching here. Then, because M0 heel is on and the cylinder is at fully retracted position, Y3 will turn on, that will cause the solenoid to turn on, and it will cause the cylinder to extend. And now, the cylinder reaches the fully extended position that will cause X5 to turn on. And because X5 turns on, it will cause the count value of counter 0 to increase. And the normally closed contact of X5 here will be open that will cause Y3 to turn off. And it will cause the cylinder to retract. And now because the cylinder retracts, it will cause X4 to turn on again. And because M0 here is on, it will cause Y3 to turn on again. And the cycle will repeat. Now let's assume that 5 cycle is already complete. And because of that, it will cause counter 0 to turn on. And when the cylinder is at fully retracted position, it will automatically reset the counter and it will cause M0 to turn off because it will break the latching here. And because M0 is off, that will cause the normally open contact of M0 here to turn off and the cycle will not repeat anymore. And because the counter is already reset right now, it will cause the normally closed contact of the counter to go back to its initial state. Okay, now let's have our simulation. Okay, that's it. Now let's go to our next exercise. Exercise 2. Create a PLC program given the following conditions. You have one push button and one actuator. If PB1 is pressed, the process will start. If switch is off, the process will stop if the cycle repeats three times. If switch is on, the process will stop if the cycle repeats five times. And the process here is the same as the process of our previous exercise. Now, let's have our demonstration. Let's press PB1. Let's turn on the selector switch. 
Now, let's press PB1 again. Okay, that's it. Now, I want you to post this video and try to solve it by yourself. Then after that, you can resume this video so that you can compare your answer to my answer. Okay, let's continue. This will be my answer to this problem. If we energize x0, it will cause m0 to turn on. And m0 will not turn off even if x0 is off because there is a latching here. And because the normally open contact of m0 is on, it will cause y3 to turn on. And because of that, cylinder will extend. And when the cylinder reaches the fully extended position, it will turn off. And the cycle will repeat. Then here, M0 is on. And every time the cylinder reaches the fully extended position, it will increase the count value of either counter 1 or counter 0, depending on the status of the selector switch. But... If either of the counter is activated, it will cause both of the counter to reset. And at the same time, it will turn off M0. And by turning off M0, it will cause the process to stop. Okay, let's have our demonstration. Now let's turn on the selector switch. Let's press PB1 again. Okay, that's it. Now let's go to our next exercise. Exercise 3. Create a PLC program given the following conditions. You have two push buttons and one actuator. If PB1 is pressed, the process will start. If PB2 is pressed, the process will stop. If process is running, lamp 1 will turn on and lamp 2 will turn off. If process is idle, lamp 1 will turn off and lamp 2 will turn on. Now. This will be our process. As you can see here, this will be the indicator of the status of the cylinder. At this point, the cylinder extends. And at this point, the cylinder retracts. The cycle will be, cylinder 1 will extend. Then, after it reaches the fully extended position, cylinder 2 will extend. Then, if cylinder 2 reaches the full extended position, cylinder 1 will retract, and after cylinder 1 reaches the fully retracted position, cylinder 2 will retract. Now let's have our demonstration. Because the process is idle, lamp 2 is on. Now let's press PB1. And as you can see, when you press PB1, lamp 1 turns on and lamp 2 turns off. But when we press PB2, lamp 1 turns off and lamp 2 turns on. And while lamp 1 is on, the process is running. And the only way to turn off or to stop the process is by pressing PB2. Okay, that's it. Now, I want you to post this video and try to solve it by yourself.
Then after that, you can resume this video so that you can compare your answer to my answer. Okay, let's continue. This will be my answer to this problem. Let's press PB1. By pressing PB1, X0 is energized and that will cause Y0 to turn on. And because there's a latching here, Y0 will not turn off even if X0 is off. And as you can see, there's a negated coil here for Y1 or lamp 2. And because Y0 is on and the cylinder is at fully retracted position, Y3 will turn on. And because Y3 is on, it will cause the cylinder to extend. And now because the cylinder reaches the full extended position, X5 will be activated. And because X5 is activated and cylinder 2 is at fully retracted position, it will cause Y4 to turn on. And because Y4 is on, cylinder 2 will extend. And now, because cylinder 2 reaches the full extended position, X7 will turn on. And that will cause the normally close contact of X7 here to turn off. And because of that, Y3 will turn off. And that will cause the cylinder to retract. And because cylinder 1 reaches the fully retracted position, it will cause the normally close contact of X4 here to turn off. And that will cause Y4 to turn off. And because of that, the cylinder retracts. And as you can see here, the cycle will repeat because X4 is turned on. And now, the only way to stop the cycle is by pressing PB2. Okay, now let's have our simulation. Okay, that's it. Thank you for watching this video. And please wait for the next episode of our tutorial. And that's all for today. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Click the notification bell to notify you for new video. Please like and share my YouTube videos and like my Facebook page. Please click see first on our Facebook page to notify you for new posts. If you like this video, please comment nice. Please comment negative and colon and put your negative comments about this video. Please type suggestion semicolon and put the suggestion about this video. And if you think that this video needs some improvement, just type improvement semicolon and put the things that you want to improve about this video. I will use all of your comment, negative comment, suggestion and improvement so that I can improve all my future videos. Thank you for all the feedbacks and thank you again. See you next time.